Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Trio World School Management, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to Trio Thoughts Virtual Open House. I am so, so delighted to interact with all of you on a Saturday morning. So uh, we've planned this live session uh, basically to tell you more about Triotot's curriculum methodologies. And I will also share some importance about, you know, important points about various methodologies that are, you know, educational approaches that are related to preschool. So before we begin uh, with our live session, let me tell you something about myself. My name is Greshma Mumaya. I am head of Triotot's. Um, I came into this beautiful campus six years back and uh, I, I started working with them as teacher, then preschool coordinator, then corporation head and now head of talks. My education and career have been dedicated to developing young minds. I have a bachelor degree in human and child development and a postgraduate degree in school counseling from University of Mumbai. I have done my certification in early years foundation stage from UK, and it empowers me to create an eclectic curriculum for nurturing young minds. I am also a certified educator from esteemed institutions like Harvard, UNESCO, UNICEF, Microsoft, and Khan Academy. Now, I enjoy creating vibrant learning environments that are happy and warm for children, and Trio Thoughts was started with a small thought, let the magic of childhood unfold in a magical manner. Now, as parents, it is extremely important for all of you to know about the school on which your child will be embarking on a learning journey. So it's today I will be sharing first some information about Trio World School as a whole school, and then we move on to Trio Dots. So let us begin. So we are TRIO. We are a Bangalore-based chain of schools and education management company that was established in 2007. We are channeling our passions for making education better for all through careful research, planning, implementation, and reflection. Now, that's the picture of our beautiful campus. Um, so let me start with the vision. The vision of TRIO World School is to create and nurture individuals who have the knowledge, empathy, leadership, and fortitude to stand up to the challenges that the world possess in the future. The mission is to provide an extraordinary environment for learning, bonding, and all-round all development that helps create and mold world-class future leaders. Now, most of the times, uh, parents ask me, what is TRIO? What is the meaning of TRIO? Why do you call it as TRIO? So the name TRIO signifies the synergistic interaction of the three most important entities that impact a life of a child. That is school, home, and society. So that's what TRIO is all about. Now, before you select any school, it is important for you to know the core values of the school. The trio philosophy combines global learning with time-tested values. Now, these are our core values. Leadership. Now, we try to inculcate leadership qualities through small activities in preschool like line leader, activity leader, uh, we have pencil leader, we have book leader. So we start by doing these small activities in our preschool. Next, the second core value is discipline. Now discipline in trio thoughts is not about being strict or punishing. We absolutely do not believe in it. However, we use strategies like calm corner, quiet corner, mindfulness, yoga to really you know, create that awareness of discipline in 
children. The next is academic excellence. It means that we provide quality early years education, which will help children excel in academics. And the last and the most important core value is service. Now, how do we do create this value of service in children? We celebrate, uh, you know, events like Dan Utsav, which is, you know, which, which was started by our respected, uh, you know, uh, Narendra Modi, our prime minister. So uh, events like Dan Utsav, Literacy Day, where children donate a lot of storybooks and books uh, to orphanages and to government schools. So we, we kind of uh, start building up this value right from preschool. So these are the four core values of TRIO. Next, I'll be sharing a, a very brief introduction about our ventures. Um, the first is TRIO World Academy. We are an international school and authorized IB World School. Uh, we have children, uh, students from uh, 28 countries. Uh, next is TRIO World School, uh, which is an ICSE school. And uh, TRIO Tots Preschool is the third venture. And the fourth venture is TRIO Educational Services. It is a Bangalore-based franchising, education management, training, and development company that gives individuals, corporations, and universities a competitive edge on a global platform. So these are the four ventures under TRIO. Um, let me share some interesting milestones with all of you. So TRIO has been in the field of education for more than 12 years. Uh, we have uh, 1.2 million square feet total build up area. We own more than 35 school buses. And every day we prepare more than 1500 meals in our cafeteria. So these are some interesting milestones that I feel as a parent, it is important for you to know. Next is teacher mentoring program. So, so far we have invested more than 2.5 million rupees in teacher training program. And we have spent more than 15,000 hours of professional development programs for teachers annually. Now, why am I sharing this information with you? Because it's important that you know that we mean business and we really take care of teachers and you know their professional development. So we are pretty serious about teacher training. Next, our journey of success. So we started as a Trio World School um, in 2007, August. And in May 2014, we, we inaugurated Trio Tots Sakar Nagar. And 2015, we started Trio World School ICAC. So these are our, this is our journey of success. So now I have kind of shared a brief idea about Trio World School or Trio as a company. Uh, let's get, understand now more about Trio Tots. That's all, that's the information that we are here for. So Trio Tots program, uh, we have nursery. It is a very well-structured nursery curriculum for the children in the age group of three years. And then we have kindergarten one and kindergarten two. So we involve a lot of innovative playway method includes, you know, fun activities, experiments and games to engage young learners. Now, um, most of the time I hear parents, uh, they're very confused about what is nursery, what is LKG, UKG, prep one, two, because different schools have different, um, you know, names for their classes or for their programs. So parents, let me give you a small tip here. Do not get confused with the names. Just count the number of years before grade one that they have. So if they have three years before grade first standard, then it is nursery, LKG, UKG. If it is only two years that a school has before grade one, then it is only LKG and UKG, right? So do not get confused. Just keep the, uh, you know, count the number of years, uh, number of programs that a school has before first standard. And I think your, your uh, concern will be resolved. Next. 
let me talk about the various triotots approaches. Uh, what are the educational approaches that we follow? I will go a little bit into detail about each of these approaches to help you understand uh, why we are implementing these approaches. So the first and the foremost um, theory that we implement in our curriculum is multiple intelligence theory. What is multiple intelligence theory? Have you heard it before? So uh, multiple intelligence theory was developed by Dr. Howard Gardner. And uh, he claims that all human beings have multiple intelligences and these multiple intelligences can be nurtured uh, and strengthened by giving a right kind of simulation, stimulation to children or it can be ignored and weakened. So he believes that each individual have nine intelligences. Let me just give you a brief information about what are these nine intelligences. First one is linguistic intelligence, where uh, you know we help children develop their vocabulary, develop their language. Second is logical and mathematical uh, intelligence. It's more about you know reasoning, logical reasoning, um, you know understanding math concepts, numeracy concepts. Third is uh, spatial intelligence. Uh, it is basically understanding the space, um, the size, um, you know, and shapes and are in the environment. Next is bodily kinesthetic intelligence. It is about understanding your body and, you know, involving movement in the curriculum. Next is musical intelligence. It's creating awareness about music, you know, rhythm, tempo in the children. Next is interpersonal intelligence, which is more of people smart, which means helping children develop people skills to really interact. And this is the most important 21st century skill that we need to develop in our children. I hope you all agree with that. People skills right now in the current scenario is extremely important. Next is intrapersonal intelligence. It's uh, you know more of understanding yourself and you know, meditating, mindfulness, everything comes under intrapersonal intelligence. And the last is naturalistic uh, intelligence, where you're getting uh, you know, aware about your nature, uh, how nature helps us and what is the importance of the nature. Now, these are the nine intelligences that um, Howard Gardner says that every individual has it in themselves. Now, how do we create curriculum based on this multiple intelligence concept. So through our curriculum, we try that we cater to at least five to six intelligences of a child. Now, for example, uh, let me give you an example of uh, letters, which is most easiest for you all to understand. If we are teaching, say, letter A to children, how do we do it through multiple intelligence? First, we sing a rhyme on letter A. So music comes here. Second, we tell a story about letter A. So your uh, language development happens there, your linguistic intelligence it is developed there. Uh, we, we add a lot of movement activities on uh, letter A. For example, you know, crawl on letter A or hop on letter A, where the child is using their entire body to, to do an activity. So bodily kinesthetic, then um, uh, we do interpersonal, uh, we do a lot of group activities on letter A. For example, there is a big apple drawn on a chart paper and all the children will do that activity together. Okay, um, they will create a big apple on their own. So interpersonal skill comes here, you know, where they learn to, you know, give that space to their classmate and and share the, you know, the materials with their classmates. So that's how we try and, you know, inculcate multiple intelligence theory in our curriculum. That's just one example. So now in letter A, we've tried to involve four or five intelligences. Then in that particular week, when we are teaching letter A, uh, in, in math, if we are doing number one, we try to focus on the other four or five uh, intelligences. So that's how our curriculum and our lesson plans are planned for children. 
Next is Playway method or kindergarten method. Um, this theory was developed by Frederick Frobel, one of my favorite educationists. Um, and we take our curriculum again is designed on major two theories, multiple intelligence and playway method. Now there are five basic principles that we take from playway method. First, learning takes place through doing. Now any concept that is introduced in our preschool is always by doing. The children involve themselves in activity and um, you know only then they understand the concept. Let me take the example of apple A, uh, sorry, letter A, and you are introducing the uh, apple in it. Now, unless the child touch and feels the apple, and just touching is also not enough. We, we actually cut the apple. Now, we generally say that apple is red. Now, I remember, uh, I remember an incident in our classroom where uh, the teacher is actually cutting the apple and uh, we generally say apple is red, but when the child opened the, I mean, saw the apple inside and say, apple is also white. Okay, because the inside of the apple is almost like a white color for children. So, uh, you know, that's how uh, it's important that children actually experience everything instead of just rote learning, saying apple is red, apple is red, apple is red. No, it's not important, let children think uh, the child here who said apple is also white has actually used his brain and his thinking, right? And of course, then children actually taste the apple to understand the, you know, taste of the uh, apple. So that's where uh, I say that learning takes place through doing. Unless children are immersed in an activity, it might be difficult for them to um, understand the concept. They might understand, but it will always be through rote learning. Like um, most of the times parents say that my child knows how to say one to one to hundred. My child knows how to say ABCD. Do you think only saying one to hundred is important? No, it is more important to understand the quantity of number one. When I'm saying that, uh, give me five crayons, is the child able to give me five crayons? That is more important. Just saying like, you know, like a parrot talking one to hundred is not enough. That is actually rote learning, which we do not believe in. We instead, you know, um, I'll just give you an example that in nursery, um, we, we, you know, our parents are generally surprised because we do not introduce them to numbers one to 10, uh, like show them number one, number one to 10 first. We first give them quantity. We make them understand the concept of quantity. And once they know how to count one to 10, understand if the child is able to give me five crayons when I'm asking, only then we introduce the numbers to them. So that's how uh, we, we complete, we do not believe in rote learning. Next is learning takes place in an atmosphere of freedom. Now, when I say freedom, of course, we are not a school which says that, okay, um, you know, let child do what they want to do. No, we try to give them freedom in our structured curriculum, in our structured environment. How do we do that? We offer a lot of choices to children. Okay, we, we ask them to select what, what topic they would like to learn about, whether they want to do math or they want to do English. They wanted to pick, do a coloring with red crayon or green crayon. We do not force them to, to just, you know, uh, follow uh, the colors that, that we want them to do. So if, if, for example, if the child is coloring a tree, it's okay if the child wants to pick up a blue color, it's perfectly fine. So um, it's important that we give that kind of freedom for children to really think. Eventually, they'll understand that trees are always green in color. But why stop, stop their learning at this moment and tell them, no, tree is green in color, so you should take green color. Let's not do that even at, even at home. Next is learning should be selected to life and not to books. And the best example for this is we have a subject called uh, knowledge and understanding of world, um, which is in, in layman's term, uh, we can call it as EVS. We do not have books for it. We do not give any book for it. We hardly make any worksheet for it because that uh, in that subject, they have to understand their world and they cannot understand the world based on what information is given in books because information changes every day. Uh, to give you an example, 
um, most of the EVS books right now do not have information about the Statue of Unity that is built in, in Gujarat, which means should we not introduce children or inform them about that monument? We can't restrict ourselves to, the, to books. Yeah, so uh, we do not, we follow a structured curriculum, but we keep adding new information to it every time. So our children are aware of Statue of Unity that is in Gujarat. So that's why I say that learning should be selected to life and not to books. The method that uh, a teacher uses should suit the needs and interest of the child. Extremely important. If the teacher is unable to understand what the child needs or how the child is learning, whatever she's trying to teach, the child will not understand the concept. So that's why we give a lot of time in the beginning of the academic year for children and teachers to get used to each other, to settle with each other, to understand each other. Because once the teacher gets an idea uh, that, okay, this child, understands concept when I'm showing pictures. This child understands when I'm, you know, uh, more by doing activities, then the teacher will plan, you know, their day-to-day -day activities accordingly. So it is very important for teachers in the classroom to understand what, what is the requirement of the child. And the fifth most important point, ample opportunities should be provided to children for self-expression. Now, we have a lot of storytelling sessions, puppetry sessions, pretend play sessions that uh, where children are allowed to express themselves. Yeah, we do an activity of weaving a story, okay, where teacher starts a story and then each child adds one line to it and express themselves. We also give them uh, every day morning, we have circle time in our classrooms where children and teachers actually talk to themselves and children get a chance to express themselves. So ample opportunities should be given in the curriculum to, for self-expression. So this was about playway and kindergarten method. Third one is Montessori. Now, let me be very clear here that we are not a Montessori school. Yeah, we are, we, we do not call ourselves as Montessori school, but we have incorporated one of the vital components of Montessori, um, which is exercise of practical life. It is also called as EPL. Now, what are, what is EPL? So basically there are a lot of uh, activities, um, you know, practical life activities that are fundamentally important part of Montessori uh, environment. And it is these activities that actually help children master the skills that he or she needs to become independent. Simple things like folding napkin, uh, buttoning their shirt, tying their shoelace, braiding, grating, grating of cucumber or carrot. Then we have plucking of methi leaves, plucking of uh, curry leaves. Um, there are, list of activities that that we actually do it in the classroom even like cleaning of their table um then we have pouring a water from from the jug to the to the class now these activities are actually taken for granted okay we do we do not really actually teach these activities to children but uh, sooner or later, for children to become independent in their lives, these are the life skills that are extremely important for children to to really, you know, um, to to know for children to know and to be able to do it. So um, this is the most important part that we have taken from um, Montessori methodology because they, uh, we also call them as fine motor, um, you know, activities, uh, but. Specifically, what Montessori has in EPL are more of activities they will use it in their day-to-day -day life. Like even simple like folding of napkin, folding of clothes are taught to, taught to our children in, in the classrooms. It is a part of their everyday activity. So that's, that was our third approach that we implement. And the last approach is Reggio Emilia. Reggio Emilia comes from Italy. And it is developed by uh, Loris Malguzzi. Um, Reggio Emilia has a beautiful concept. Um, 
and uh, we actually follow this methodology to set up our environment in the school and also to create that kind of interaction between teacher and child. Now, this theory says a very important thing that it's important not just for the child to listen to the teacher or the adult in the classroom. Most of the time at home or at school, the child is constantly listening to the adult. Okay, but it is extremely important that a adult, an adult in the classroom or at home listens to the child. Now, as a parent, um, just observe your day for, for one whole day, observe your interaction with your child. Most of the time, it is either child is listening to you and most of the time what you do is we give instructions to the children. Don't do this, finish your food, sit here, finish your homework. It's, it's always the instructions that we are giving to the children. It also happens in school. I'm not just saying that it happens only at home. Even in school, uh, you know, as, as adults, we are so used to giving instructions only to, to children that we sometimes forget to really interact with them, to really talk to them. Okay, and even when the child is trying to talk to us, what we try, we generally do is we don't listen to them. We keep giving them, okay, you are a good boy or you are a good girl. You should always do it this way. You should always do that way. We generally don't listen to what children want to tell us. Now, that is one important thing that we are implementing in our classrooms, that it is very important that a teacher is always listening to our children. And unless children express themselves, they will not be comfortable with teacher and they will eventually it will hamper their learning. So that is one important thing that we have taken from Reggio Emilia. And the second uh, beautiful point that Reggio Emilia says is to display the child's work in the environment. Because they say that child does not just learn from books or from talking with teacher. They learn so much from the environment also. Now, um, what we do, whenever you come to Trio Tots uh, campus, you will always see children's work is displayed in the classroom. It could, be, it could be right, it could be wrong, it could be shabby, it would be beautiful, anything, whatever it is. We do not label them or we do not uh, you know, call them it is right or wrong, but we allow children, we display, allow children to create whatever they want to, and then we display it in the classroom. So a child feels, you know, proud when their work is displayed. It, it motivates them to do better every day, every time. So uh, these are the four educational approaches that we implement in Trio Tots curriculum. So for our curriculum and to plan daily lesson plans, we generally follow multiple intelligence and playway method. Um, for exercise of practical life, we, we, we have taken it from Montessori and for our environment and, you know, for our interaction between the adult and the child in the classroom, we follow Reggio Emilia. So I hope you've got a little bit of idea about these theories um, and also how we implement this curriculum. Now, let's move on to the next thing, which is very important for educator and parents to know. Readiness philosophy. What is readiness philosophy? Which means we do not push a child into doing a task like writing or even jumping or running before he or she is ready. Now, why this philosophy is so important? Uh, you must have come across many children uh, who hate writing. They do not want to write. Um, they, they just avoid writing, they will make, uh, you know, uh, they will make excuses whenever the teacher or the child, or, sorry, or the parent is sitting with the child for, for writing their homework or, you know, for writing activities, the child will always make some excuse, go to the washroom or drink water. Now, why does a child do that? Because the child was pushed to, you know, to, to do writing before he or she was ready before the fingers were ready the child was pushed to do writing and because of which the, ch the fingers hurt the pain and that's why the child doesn't want to write okay now 
how we do writing in our curriculum is we call it, it's it's a process it's a skill that children eventually learn so it's better not to push the child to write unless the fingers are developed so you know uh, we do that's why in nursery uh, we do lot of fine motor activities and lot of pencil grip activities a simple activity i'll tell you uh we have piggy banks and we have coin uh let your child pick up the coin using the first finger and the thumb okay this is the grip right what we use this grip for pencil let the child pick up the coin and put it in the piggy bank such simple activities you don't have to have you know expensive toys there are amazing uh, pencil grip activities which you can make it or create it from the materials available at home and actually get the children ready for writing so we do a lot of pencil grip activities in in our classrooms uh, before actually children hold a crayon or a pencil and there are a lot of uh, such things which are extremely important when it comes to writing like we generally prefer giving children the big pencil okay we give the most longest pencil to children but we don't realize that um, the weight of that pencil is little too bigger i mean it's it's little more for children to handle it so for nursing for younger children it is important that we give a give smaller pencil which goes beyond this point it should go beyond this point so that it becomes easier for children do not give them long pencils so these are certain tips that we actually do it in our school so that writing becomes you know interesting for children because our whole objective is is children should look forward to writing instead of hating to write so um there are various such uh, tasks that we generally do not push children in and we completely believe in the readiness philosophy our methodology and pedagogy is very well you know researched now even if writing has started in the classroom and if we feel that a particular child is not ready to 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 actually write we the teacher will actually speak to the parent give them ideas on how they can get the children to write you know uh, ready to write give them pencil list of pencil grip activities fine motor uh, activities which will get children to ready to write so teachers constantly you know uh, interact with the parents as much as possible uh, so that we get more and more support from home as well so readiness philosophy extremely important we do not push children into doing things uh, that the child is not ready for so i would request the same thing to the parents do not push your child even it's okay if your child is you know if your neighbor or neighbor is neighbor's kid has already started writing and you will think my child has not started writing it's okay because every child attains uh, developmental milestones at different time it's not that every child learns uh, to walk at 18 months some children learn early some start walking little faster so give that time and you know uh, space to your child next is our uh, domains of learning we have six domains of learning um in in a layman's term it could also be called as subjects okay but subject sounds little boring for children so we call it as domains of learning the first is uh, personal social and emotional development second is language and literacy third is logical thinking and reasoning fourth is knowledge and understanding of the world creative development and physical development i get little bit into detail of each of the uh, domains of learning so that it helps you understand what exactly it is so the most important development that we as school believe is personal social and emotional development now what is it it is also called as psed these are the three building blocks of future and success in life if a child is not emotionally settled with us in the classroom how much of a good our curriculum is how much of a good our teaching aids are the child is not going to learn or understand anything so it's extremely important so that's why we give so much importance to personal social and emotional development 
we give them more importance. I mean, if you see, we have numbered it first before actually language and literacy and numeracy also we have numbered PSAD as first. Now, if you see all three of them, like personal, social and emotional um, development are actually linked to each other and often they are bracketed together as one area of learning and development. Now, starting the process of successful PSAD is essential for young children in all aspects of their lives. Now, if a child has developed personally, socially, and emotionally, the child will be able to relate well with other children and adults in the classroom. The child will be able to make friends and get, get on with them. The child will feel more secure and more valued. And it can, the child will explore itself and you know uh, they will learn more confidently. And ultimately they will feel good about themselves. Now, unless these things the child is able to do it, how much ever good the curriculum is, the child will not be able to learn. So please do not neglect this. It is extremely important that, that, that the child is happy in school. You know, our more main objective of our curriculum is that the child should be happy to come to school. The child should look forward, you know, uh, to come to school. So that's why we give a lot of importance to it. And when does these development happen in our, uh, you know, everyday life? One is outdoor play. Uh, outdoor play is an unstructured and non-instructional play where children get to do what they want to. They interact with their classmates. You know, they do a lot of pretend play. So outdoor play is, is the time they get to express themselves. Circle time, extremely important. Circle time should happen every day in every classroom. Now, this is the time where children and teacher actually interact with each other. So generally, most of the times, uh, I'll, I'll share an example with you. Uh, I was going for an observation in one of our nursery classroom and uh, the particular class teacher was absent yesterday. And um, next day, the children were waiting for her and you know they were asking her that, why were you absent? What happened to you? Why didn't you come to school? And then the teacher started sharing that, you know, I was not feeling well. Uh, I had a stomach upset and I had to go to doctor. So these are the kind of interactions that children and teachers have in the morning in the circle time. We generally suggest parents not to miss on circle time. So it's important that the parents drop their children on time. Next, we have fun time. Fun time, we've ded dedicated to a lot of these group games uh, that we were playing during our childhood, like Lagori, and you know, we had um, uh, Dog in the Bone. Some of these games we've actually missed on playing, you know, we have stopped playing. So, fun time is dedicated for those um, uh, old traditional games. Exercise of practical life, I've already shared with you. It's all about uh, life skill activities like buttoning and you know, folding of napkins. Calendar time. Calendar time is also called uh, our, in our school as registration time. So um, it, when we were children, um, we always had attendance where the teacher will call out the name and will say present and absent. But here we have a first registration time. So as soon as the child comes inside the classroom, uh, there is a tree uh, drawn on a chart paper. And then there are apples on which the child's picture are stuck on it. So the child will come identify the uh, himself or herself will take out the apple and stick it on the tree along with other classmates so this helps the child um, you know uh, to to feel belong to the classroom to feel valued and you know feel part of the classroom calendar time we actually you know ask every day look at the weather and ask children whether it is sunny cloudy rainy and accordingly we have a weather chart also and we have snack time. Snack time is also where teacher and children sit together and have snacks. Um, and, you know, they again get a chance to, you know, interact. What do they like to eat? What they don't like to eat? And this is the time where teacher talks to them about, uh, you know, food habits, good uh, eating habits, food habits, table manners, etiquettes. So that's how our PSED, you know, uh, personal, social and emotional development happens in our school. Next is language and literacy. So uh, language is basically not learned, it is acquired. So we follow the natural way of learning language. How we learn our mother tongue? 
mother tongue uh, we generally listen to the language that is spoken in our house and we we listen to it constantly for first one one and a half year and then we start speaking small words and then we form sentences into mother tongue that's the same way we actually teach english to the children we first speak to speak to them in english as much as possible and then children slowly start picking up words in english and then they start reading and writing now here i would like to add a small thing most of the time when children come to us in nursery uh, they actually do not understand english so much because uh, most of the time we speak our mother tongue at home which is fine and uh, no problem with it Mo what we do is that we we have uh, teachers uh, who who know multiple languages and we give common instruction in english and then if we the teacher knows that this particular child has little bit uh, you know difficulty in understanding english then we translate the instruction to them in uh, their mother tongue so that it, that's how the children will you know um, understand english language but here one small tip for all the parents there uh, there is always a debate whether mother should we teach mother tongue or should we teach uh, english to our children and i would recommend um, parents that please teach mother tongue to your children because it is extremely important uh, that language will help your child you know interact with your family members with your grandparents which is so important in their social skills right so uh, please do teach mother tongue and let your child learn mother tongue but once your child is say about uh you know two years and the child has already started speaking in mother tongue that's when i would suggest one parent to start talking to the child in english now what happens is the child will try to compare the mother tongue to the words in english and slowly pick up both the languages so um even if your child is learning having like a father has a different mother tongue and mother has a different mother tongue you can still teach them three languages also that's that's perfectly fine so that's how what happens is when your child comes to school at the age of 3 the child has already picked up english also and also knows mother tongue so that's a small tip for all our parents uh next is um in language and literacy is basically english where we completely follow phonetic program a uh, phonetic program is basically we tell the sounds of the letters like a b c d are the name of the letters and when you say b it actually makes the sound b ball right so b k d f these are the sound of the letters now when we teach phonic sounds to children it becomes easier for them to start reading now uh, how are some introdu uh, letters introduced to children as i said during multiple intelligence we add lot of movement activities tact tactile activities we use flash cards we use rhymes stories and of course we have our own designed workbooks based on our curriculum which children use in the class next is logical thinking and reasoning um this is again very important and numbers is just a part of it there are other things also so numbers then we have pre math concepts pre math concepts are nothing but understanding up and down below above long short thick and thin um you know before after these are pre math concepts that children it, it is important that we actually introduce these to children so that it later on helps them in you know geometry and all that next is shapes and colors um quantities and measurements very interesting topic for children they love measuring things they, they you know we we for example we do lot of hand spin um you know measuring so we ask children to measure the table that they are sitting on through their hand spin through their foot spin a uh, very good in you know developing logic for children a lot of uh, reasoning they use their brain they're thinking a lot so quantities and measurement is very interesting for children uh time and money we introduce in uh, uh, ukg uh, kindergarten to we introduce children to time and we also introduce them to money trust me they really enjoy these activities because our numbers i mean this subject is more of hands on and uh, it is more of experiencing it rather than just filling up workbook or doing worksheets 
Next domain of learning is knowledge and understanding of the world. The most interesting topic for children. They enjoy this subject very much because um, they get to know more about their world and uh, also they get to share a lot of, um, you know, their experience with, children, with uh, their classmates. So um, for knowledge and understanding of the world, we do, uh, we also bifurcate the, the theme. We have around eight themes in a year, like my body, animal, India, countries of the world. Then we have food habits. We have transportation, community helpers. Now every theme is bifurcated in uh, geography, science, history, and general knowledge. Um, to give you an example, um, if the theme is the transportation, um, of course, in nursery, children are introduced to uh, the various um, vehicles that we see around. Then um, we also bifurcate them into land, land transport, air transport, um, you know, water transport. We also introduce them to the invention of wheel. Okay, and we also tell them which cars are produced in which country. So if you see geography, science, history, and general knowledge has come into one theme. So that's how each theme is taught to children in knowledge and understanding of the world. We take this subject very seriously. Um, more interest, teachers also enjoy the subject because there is no book to it. They can, you know, uh, do a lot of research on the topic. Like in, in kindergarten too, when they're learning about my body, they learn about respiratory system through blowing of balloon activity. There are hand like so many activities that teachers get to do along with the children because there is not much of writing in the subject, but it is more of understanding um, the concept that they are teaching. So that's our fourth uh, domain of learning. Next is creative development. Again, very important as Sir Ken Robinson said, creativity is as important as literacy. So we give equal importance to creative development in our preschool. And creative uh, doesn't mean that, you know, just the art and craft activity where teacher is doing most of the craft, okay? Um, it is more about allowing children to express themselves through art, through play, through music, through art and craft, through dance, where children get to express themselves. So we do not believe to do, like, you know, we have art and craft as part of our curriculum, but our focus is that children should be able to do it on their own instead of teacher, you know, doing everything and then, you know, putting it in the environment. Next is physical development, extremely important. Now, uh, physical development, we have bifurcated into two, uh, two uh, uh, subtopics. One is fine motor and life skills. Um, fine motor skills are the collective skills and activities that involve using a lot of hands and fingers. Um, that is fine motor skills are those skills which require small muscles of the hand to work together to perform precise and refined movements. Uh, like sorting activity, we have like animals, uh, plastic animals, we, we keep it and we ask children to sort it, um, you know, into uh, aquatic animals, wild animals and domestic animals. So when they're sorting, they're using their fingers to pick up and then put it where they have to put it. So if you see two concepts are introduced here, one is fine motor skills and also grouping of animals like your QW topics come into the picture folding of napkins, uh, beading. We do a lot of beading with children. Pounding, yeah, we give them small grains and we ask them to pound and we do lacing. So these are some of the fine motor, uh, you know, activities that we do. And next is gross motor development. Gross motor skills are movements that involve larger muscles of the body. Um, you know, the development of gross motor skills starts as soon as the child is born. When the child is trying to turn, trying to crawl, trying to walk, um, the child is using whole body movement. The child is using their gross motor skills. So these skills allow children to control their body movements that require the use of large muscles. So outdoor play, uh, where they get to run, they get to cycle, they get to play games. We have a program called Kinder PE, which is Kinder Physical Education, which we have designed. It's an in-house curriculum. And uh, 
these uh, kinder pe has activities that will eventually help them in you know sports like cricket swimming basketball which generally happens after grade 1 but it's important that even for a child to hold a bat they first need to understand how to you know hit the bat there's a lot of eye hand coordination that needs to happen so that's why if you see most of these uh, games or I mean sports activity are about for children about 6 and 6 uh, and beyond age group so before the child turns 6 there are a lot of activities gross motor activities that a child needs to do balancing activities obstacle course and music and movement these are some of the gross motor activities that we have in our school next is enrichment activities um every class gets to go for a field trip at least 3 to 4 times in a year we celebrate all the festivals all indian festivals um and special days like international tiger day world puppetry day world math day all these days are celebrated we also do water play uh, depending upon the climate in bangalore and then we also have sand play which children get to do almost every day we've added lot of add ons new things that we keep adding in our curriculum one is brain gym uh, brain gym basically is a series of simple activities um, that are used to enhance the capacity of whole brain learning the physical movement enable enables children and adults to become more alert uh, more focused and uh, ready to learn now every subject when we start a period uh, there are some brain gym activities that that we do um, so that the child is able to focus more when the teacher is talking so children who have a short attention span Uh, or find it difficult to really focus brain gym activity really really helps them um, to really focus on in the classroom next is music music is uh, we have a separate block for music where children really learn understand the tempo the rhythm uh, mbimb program it's um, the full form is my body uh, is my body program it's basically a musical animated child abuse prevention program uh it was it is started by uh, chris kais uh she is a popular south african singer and uh, this program is already been uh, you know used by around 3 lakh 50000 children and i am um, the ambassador of this program in india so that's how we are able to you know um use this program in our school where we introduce children to uh, you know good touch and bad touch through stories through music through activities next is handwriting without tears it's um, it's a proven method from years of innovation and research um, it is actually from us and all our teachers are trained for handwriting without tears uh, these are again as i said uh, we we really focus on writing and we make it more interesting for children doing you know a lot of before children actually start writing there are a series of um, you know uh, program there are series of activities that children do Uh, to give you an example they first you know write first they do sand letter tracing then they do they create the letter in the sand and then they move on to writing so that writing becomes easier for them and it is more interesting for them so child safety very important for you as parents to know we have 200 plus cctv cameras in our campus but we do not have cctv cameras inside the classroom all our classrooms have glass doors so that you know it's visible we have two cctv cameras per school bus a criminal background verification check of all employees is done we have 25 plus guards in our campus and uh, we have female guards when it comes to every block building we have female guards so that you know it's more safe for children um we have stringent anti bullying policies we have buses with gps first aid kits speed governors and always along with the driver there is a female attendant uh, we have three tire visitor verification proce uh, procedures uh, mobile number uh, based entry for visitors fire extinguisher and smoke detectors are installed in common uh, 
areas. We have mock fire alarm drill conducted at school every quarter. Uh, what happens in mock fire alarm is basically we really teach children because if there is a fire in the class, in the school, what the child has to do in, in those emergencies is actually taught to the children. We do not have uh, blind spots at all in our school. We have a huge camp campus, but there is no blind spot where the child can go alone and you know be there. Uh, we sensitize children on good touch, bad touch during circle time through our MBIMB program. And we have child safety policy implemented on Tots pre in Tots Preschool. Uh, you can also see our uh, child safety policy on our website. So we've come to the end of our live session and uh, we will see if there are any uh, questions. Um, so we've actually uh, gone beyond our uh, duration. So we come here uh, to the end of our Q&A session. And uh, if you are looking for admission, um, that's the school landline number. And uh, that's the number of admission coordinator. Ms. Ru Pooja Rajpal is the admission coordinator. You can contact her for um, if you're looking for admission. I thank you all for being part of this uh, Facebook Live session. Uh, I hope this session was informative, was helpful to you. If you still have any questions, uh, you can put it down in comments and we will try to answer it. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day and have a good weekend.